The GoPro Hero 10 is a fantastic camera with which you can capture amazing videos. However, in the beginning you might get a bit overwhelmed by the many settings. That's what happened to me with my first GoPro and it took me some time and a lot of tests and comparisons to figure out how to optimally set up a GoPro and how to achieve the best possible results. Today I want to save you that time and effort. I will show you how to set up your GoPro Hero 10 perfectly and what the different settings stand for. I am going to focus on the settings of the video mode and there will be separate tutorials on the photo and time-lapse mode. So we are switching to video mode. You can do that by swiping sideways or also by pressing the mode button. Here you will see in the standard configuration the shortcut for slow motion in the upper left corner, the shortcut for the field of view in the lower left corner, the shortcut for the type of stabilization in the upper right corner and the shortcut for the digital zoom in the lower right corner. If you tap on the main button at the bottom in the middle, the settings menu opens. There are already three presets here, standard, activity and cinematic. The presets are a great feature because they let you switch between different settings very quickly. I will now change the default settings to what I think is optimal. To do this, I tap on the pen to the right of standard. Now you see the actual settings menu. Let's start with the most important settings, the settings for resolution and frame rate. It makes sense to consider these two settings together because the frame rate options depend on the resolution. At the top you can choose the resolution and at the bottom the frame rate. The Hero 10 now can shoot in 5.3K. And if you want the absolute best image quality, then you should choose the resolution of 5.3K. Only with this resolution, you get the best possible image quality with the Hero 10. Already in 4K, the image quality is noticeably worse. Please note that in the first line, the resolutions are indicated with an aspect ratio of 4 to 3. A typical video file has an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. If you shoot in 4 to 3, you will find black bars on the left and right side of your image, but the field of view will be extended at the top and bottom. You will have to adjust the framing in post, but you will have more flexibility flexibility at the top and bottom. This can be especially interesting for POV shots, for example if you use a helmet mount, or even if you shoot your videos for social media and don't necessarily want to have an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. I choose 5.3K with the typical aspect ratio of 16 to 9, so I choose 5.3K in the second line. However, you should know that 5K is not always the best choice. In low light, you get much better results with 4K. This is obviously due to the way GoPro reduces image noise. I also use 4K for slow motion shots but more about that later. You should probably check if your computer generally can handle the high resolutions 4K or 5K, but if you use hardware of the last years, this should not be a problem. Now we come to the frame rate. Under 5K, you can choose between 30 and 60 frames per second. 24 frames per second should be added via update in November. All three frame rates have their advantages and disadvantages. If you plan to edit your videos, you should know the frame rate you want to use to create your project before shooting. Ideally, your footage should have the same frame rate as your projects. Choose 24 frames per second if you want to create a cinematic look. All professional movies are created at this frame rate. The disadvantage of this frame rate is that fast movements can look a bit choppy, especially when there is a lot of light and you don't use ND filters. 30 frames per second look less cinematic but smoother. 60 frames per second look even smoother and allow you to create 40% slow motion. So apart from slow motion, I would generally recommend 24 frames per second if you want to achieve a cinematic look. 30 frames per second if you prefer a smoother look. For shots underwater, motor vlogging or POV shots when doing sports, for example when skiing, I recommend 60 frames per second because the shot looks most natural then. Personally, I opt for 24 frames per second most of the time. If you live in the PAL region, that would be 25 frames per second. Since that is not yet possible at the moment, I choose 30 frames per second. If you want to shoot spectacular slow motion footage, I recommend reducing the resolution to 4K and shooting at 120 frames per second. This allows you to create up to 5 times slow motion in 4K. This is one of the important new features of the Hero 10. If you want it even slower, then reduce the resolution to 2.7K and select 240 frames per second, so you can create up to 10 times slow motion. While the image quality in 4K 120 still looks very good though, the image in 2.7K 240 already looks much worse. But of course, you don't always need slow motion and it doesn't make sense to shoot with high frame rates all the time. Especially in low light, you should rather avoid high frame rates because in low light conditions, less frames per second are advantages. Therefore, you should use a separate preset for slow motion. That way, you can quickly switch back and forth. I create a new preset with the plus. Then I select video and set it to 4K and 120 frames per second. Let's call it epic for the moment. And by the way, if you are new here, my name is Werner, I live in the Italian Alps and this channel is about filmmaking, tutorials, GoPro and other consumer cameras. 
If you're interested in these topics, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you're interested in image poles or other accessories I use, have a look at the links in the video description. Now let's have a look at the digital lens or the field of view. Here you have the choice between wide, linear, linear with horizon leveling and narrow. For recordings in a lower resolution, for example in 4K, you can also select Super View. In 5K, Super View should be added in November by an update. White is the standard field of view of the GoPro. In the case of linear, the fisheye effect is removed. The image has to be cropped for this, but the distortions are reduced. If you select linear with horizon leveling, the camera will also keep the horizon straight to prevent tilted shots. Linear with horizon leveling also leads to an improved stabilization. Narrow will also remove the fisheye effect and reduce the distortions. Only in this case, the image will be cropped even more digitally. With Super View, the field of view is extended at the top and bottom. For this, a photo free aspect ratio shot is taken and then stretched from the camera on the left and right side to the outer side. This results in very strong distortions at the left and right edges, but you get a larger field of view at the top and bottom. Super view is, in my opinion, a very interesting option for POV shots. Personally, I almost always use the wide field of view on the GoPro. I often use the camera for sports or travel. In these cases, I consider the particularly wide field of view of the GoPro to be an advantage. If distortions really bother me with a certain shot, they can also be removed in post. If you don't like the GoPro fisheye look in general, I would recommend linear with horizon leveling. That way, you can easily create very steady and cinematic shots without distortion. With the Hero 10, you can set different levels of stabilization. You generally have the choice between off, high and boost. While high already offers excellent stabilization, boost compensates for even stronger movements. However, the image is cropped by 25-30%. to High uses a crop of only 10%. Since I want to avoid a strong crop under boost, because I want to maintain a wide field of view, I normally choose higher under stabilization. Under scheduled capture, you can schedule the exact time of a capture. And with duration, you can set a time limit. With scheduled capture and duration, you can for example schedule a time-lapse capture of the sunrise and let the camera take it automatically without getting up in the morning. In video mode, I personally have hardly any use for both features. Hindsight is a very interesting feature. If you activate it, the camera will capture the 15 or 30 seconds before you press the shutter button. This of course requires that the GoPro is recording continuously. That way you can prevent missing a particularly important moment. This is interesting for example when you are shooting fast sports. However, this feature will of course cause your battery to drain much faster. So make sure you don't accidentally activate it when you don't need it. With the timer, you can delay the start of the recording by 3 or 10 seconds. This in turn is helpful for example if you want to capture yourself. And under zoom, you can digitally zoom into the image. Since this is a digital zoom, the image quality will be diminished. According to GoPro, zooming further improves stabilization. Personally, I never use this feature. Now let's come to the ProTune settings. These are the more advanced settings. The first setting refers to the video bitrate. Simply put, this is about how much video data is transferred per second. High bitrate has a positive effect on the image quality, but leads to larger files. So your SD card will fill up faster. Since we are talking about the best settings today and we are shooting in a very high resolution of 5.3K, I choose 100 megabits per second. However, you should know that this will make the files significantly bigger and the difference is not always clearly visible. Under shutter, you can set the exposure time manually. This only makes sense if you are using ND filters or maybe in low light. By default, I use the automatic. Under exposure value compensation, you can set whether the camera's automatic should expose a little darker or brighter. It makes sense to set a slightly negative value of minus 0.5 for example. This prevents the camera from overexposing bright areas in the image. In post, it is easy to brighten up shadows. However, areas that are too bright and burned out cannot be saved. This is about how cool or warm the image looks. Depending on the type of light, the white balance changes. The goal should always be that white actually looks white. The automatic of the GoPro works very well here, so I leave this setting on auto. If you take a longer shot, for example when making a longer ride with the bike, you can also set the white balance manually. This prevents the camera from changing the white balance during the recording and ruining the shot. For daylight, for example, a value of approximately 5000 or 5500 is recommended. The ISO value, in simple terms, defines how sensitively the camera reacts to incident light. The higher this value, the brighter the image. At the same time, a higher ISO value results in disturbing image noise. This image noise is very strongly visible, especially from 800 ISO. Therefore, I would set ISO minimum to 100 and ISO maximum to 400. As already mentioned in 4K, the Hero 10 achieves better results in low light. 
In 4K, you can also use ISO 800 if necessary. However, you should not expect miracles here either. The GoPro was simply not made for low light situations. You should take this into account when shooting. Sharpness is a very important setting for me. High sharpness doesn't mean more detail. Rather, the camera adds digital sharpness to the shot to artificially enhance the image. However, the image doesn't look very cinematic and the shot doesn't get a high quality look. I use a sharpness of low here. This makes the image look very soft. I then add some sharpness in post. If you don't plan to edit your footage, I would use medium here. On the Hero 10 with natural, a new color profile has been introduced. It is even the new default color profile. Natural differs from vibrant mainly in that it has less saturation. It also has slightly more natural colors. Vibrant creates the typical GoPro look with very saturated colors. With flat, you get a very flat and unsaturated image. Especially in the highlights, a little more detail is preserved. However, it has been shown that with flat, details can also be lost due to the compression in very low contrast areas of the image. For this reason, I prefer the color profile natural on the Hero 10. Raw audio. Here you could have the camera create additional WAV files to better edit the sound. I set raw audio to off. The GoPro has three microphones and depending on the wind situation, one or the other microphone could be deactivated to reduce the wind noise. You can turn this feature on or off here. I leave the setting at auto. I now apply these Proteon settings to my slow motion profile as well. So I can easily switch between standard and slow motion. So that was quite a lot of information now. So let us briefly recap. Resolution and frame rate 5.3K for optimal quality. 24 frames per second for a cinematic look. 30 if you prefer a smoother look. 60 frames per second for underwater shots, motor vlogging and other sports POV shots. 4K for better image quality in low light and 4K 120 for great slow motion. Digital lens or field of view white, linear with horizon leveling if you generally don't like the distortions of the GoPro. Stabilization high and for Protune, bitrate high, shutter auto, exposure value compensation minus 0.5, white balance auto, ISO minimum 100, ISO maximum 400, sharpness low or medium if you don't want to edit your videos, color natural, vibrant if you prefer the GoPro look. Raw audio off and wind auto. With that we have optimally set up our GoPro. I wish you much fun with your GoPro. If this video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback. If you want to support this channel, you can also use the links in the video description and buy me a coffee. There will be more videos about the Hero 10, so stay tuned and until next time.